All right, everybody, shut up. I'm trying to make a video. Thank you. All right, we're going to make a video. This video is the rest of Section 6.4, which deals with enthalpy changes in chemical reactions. Now, we've showed you this equation before. Mr. Walsh has showed you this equation. I've showed you this equation. And there it is. There's the equation for the change in the internal energy of a system as it relates to the change in the enthalpy minus P delta V, which, of course, you recall is the work. Now, I'm going to write the ideal gas law equation down for you. There it is. PV is equal to nRT. Now, remember, this process is under constant pressure conditions. So, the pressure is going to remain constant. We know that the volume changes. So, P times delta V is equal to what? See, this P delta V is equal to this P delta V here. So, what's causing the change in the volume? Well, it can't be R because R is a constant. Will you guys shut up? I'm trying to finish the video! So, R is a constant. If T remains constant during the process, which it does, and there's a special word for a process that occurs in gases in terms of temperature when the temperature is constant. I don't remember what it is. Go online, look it up. So what's got to be causing the change in the volume is the change in the number of moles. So now P delta V is equal to delta NRT, and you can replace that in the equation. So delta U is equal to delta H now minus delta NRT. Where delta N, my friends, we got to talk about delta N because people make mistakes with this delta N thing. So let's clear this out a little bit. Let's clear out our equations and let's talk about delta N a little bit. So when it comes to delta N, delta N is only for gaseous reactants and products. So it's the number of moles of gaseous product minus the number of moles of gaseous reactants. So remember, it's all about gases. Do not include anything that's not gases. So going back to the equation, delta U is now equal to delta H minus delta N R T, where delta N is the number of moles of gaseous reactants minus the number of moles of gaseous products. And the reason we convert this from P delta V to delta N R T is because really basically it's just kind of easier to make um, this kind of a calculation knowing delta N and T and R. It's much easier and it's much more likely that you would know this. And you can do it directly from an equation. So for example, if we had 2H2 of gas plus O2 gas reacts to form 2H2O and that's a 2 and that's a liquid well, we can see that delta N, very simply, is equal to zero, because there's zero moles of gas on the product side, minus three moles of gas on the reactant side, two moles of hydrogen, one mole of oxygen, so our delta N comes out to negative three. And, of course, if we give you the temperature and you know R, so it's much easier to do the calculation of the work using this equation and having this information. Okay, well, that's a very short video. Four minutes, we're done. Uh, if you have any questions, see me or Mr. Walsh, and have a good day.